Hello, those interested, concerned, uh, who can do something about this. Uh, this is about uh, Yusuf Zaidi, uh, the one who said he was a Shia Muslim. This, there was something happening in Pakistan, Karachi even. Uh, when I went to his house, he was wearing black uh, black trousers and white uh, shirt and this black and white thing was uh, the Azam this uh, uh, who were they called uh, they were called like Sipai Saiba Sipai Saiba who were against the Shias so this was uh, their color white and black uh, usually he would wear white and black uh, kind of a scarf this Azam guy against uh, Shia Muslims that if you kill one Shia you would gain paradise and uh, what they do is uh, they also have the trousers kind of he had his trousers you know folded and uh, where some of them have their like uh, uh, the saying, uh, the shalwar, they call it uh, up a bit, above the ankle. Okay? And this is how he greeted me, he came, when I went to see him in his house. And he was telling me that he had a mission. Mission, and it was a secret. So, I suspect very strongly that uh, Yusuf Zaidi in England he's gone to England he told me that he had a mission and he wouldn't tell me what the mission was so I suspect very strongly this person must be a very dangerous terrorist I started to suspect him long ago uh, after he had come and then he went to London there was a bomb blast in London Yes, and uh, there was this uh, voice of Hazrat Fatima Zahra, Salam Alaleha, that uh, Yusuf Zaidi, Kayamat ki bala beji hai, tum pe. And he told me that uh, his mother was, he was the son of Hazrat Fatima Zahra, Salam Alaleha, being a Sayyid. Zaidis are from, uh, you know, Imam Zain al Abidi, alayhi salam, or uh, Imam Jafar Sadiq, salam alayhi, alayhi salam, son, Zaid. But there is an infiltration infil in Pakistan. Uh, I suspect very strongly that some of these uh, so called Shia Muslims, the Azam, Sipai, Saibas, and all, they have disguised themselves as uh, Shias and uh, they were targeting every person like my father was uh, saying ziyarat in uh, majlises so they would target us in Nishta Park and they know everything he even took my book I had bought from Clifton uh, there used to be very few Shia books uh, in the uh, main stores, bookstores in uh, Karachi. Uh, and the only Shia books that we got were from our uh, uh, Shia bookstores. Uh, but the Pakistan wants to hide the books. Like even when Allama Iqbal, Dr. Iqbal, Allama Iqbal had written about Shias, uh, you know, that Ek Zarbat, Zarbat e Haider, or Ek Sajda e Shabiri, Iske Siva Ela, Siva Kya Rakha hai Islam mein. So these kind of things attributed to El Al Bayt, alayhi salam, would be uh, eradicated from the books and would not be kept there in the bookstores 
no more printing oh yes and they know a lot about uh, us shias they've done extensive research so he took my uh, one book that i had found in a bookstore in clifton uh, saqifa he took my book away and i had given him my dua book and he never returned that book saqifa it was all about how umar abu bakar what they did against uh, the true islam against imam ali alay salam's haq justice uh, the amanat given to imam ali passed on to imam ali alay salam as a successor of uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi so uh, some of these uh, sipai saibas uh, may- maybe all of them they know the whole truth the whole history uh, that how umar al khattab uh, what he did against prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi how aisha yusuf zaidi was telling me how much aisha the wife of the prophet troubled him that a uh, prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi uh, kept away from her for a month and imam ali alaihi salam then said to him advised him to divorce her why don't you divorce her and then the verse came down and that verse is in surah tahrim they know everything and yet they want to kill the shia muslims so what really is this if it's not political knowing the truth about uh, shia muslims knowing that uh, they have not erred uh, they are not deviants they they stand on truth on justice uh, and yet getting them killed getting their people come into our religion our sect our school of thought and uh, it's all political and it's all like egos ego you know we are the majority muslims we should rule the world and uh, uh, even telling my friend about the truth like uh, you know uh, she was not grateful or anything it's like uh, she wanted the, uh, to have an upper hand on me so it's really not about religion uh, the true islam but it's about power and uh, politics and that exactly exactly the mindset uh, the vision of uh, umar al khattab uh, the uh, the father in law of prophet muhammad and uh, abu bakar the father in law uh, father in law of uh, prophet muhammad exactly that same mindset you tell them the truth you tell them that this is uh, from god and you know and these muslims some of them so called the umayyad uh, the, it's all power struggle it has nothing to do with the true islam and yusuf zaidi has given me back my dua book which is available in shia bookstores he himself is a shia and had books and had so much knowledge he's put the dua papers of mine he wa- i don't know he tried to he said he was photocopying the book made a book of my dua book shia and he put some pages were put upside down so recently when i heard i i saw this video on imam tawhidi and he said that england is finished that the radicals are there uh they've gone on a mission to uh conquer england and make it an islamic state and they will do it they are doing it they have uh, radicalized pakistan and uh, finally gone to england 
to radicalize England. So I don't know how to do this because some of the Shia Muslims, they're not really Shias. They're Sipahi Sahibas. They're the anti-Shias who got into Shia. God knows what they did to the real Shias. Killed them. Um, Yusuf Zaidi knows so much how they used to uh, kill the Shias, like, you know, put them in the wall and put bricks on it. The Sayyids, how they used to get the Sayyids and take their lives, killing them, uh, burying them, like, uh, you know, on the walls. So this Yusuf Zaidi ran away to England uh, and what he did with uh, bringing that uh, person, uh, what's his name, Arbab Shah, his friend, and uh, Sikandar Shah. And these people, they have a devilish power, even uh, the spiritual power they have. So one day I saw in my vision, when I was resting in my mother's room, that uh, this guy, Sikandar Shah, has come with burning red devilish eyes. And then my mother's room was burnt later on. These people are devils. Yes, yeah, so they can uh, make people go insane. Uh, they, they do black magic. They do evil things. No, no, there is no way to defeat these Sipai Sahiba these radical Muslims, even if you give them the truth, it's all about power, money, and politics. Uh, even if you give them the truth. Uh, in this way, I disagree with Imam Tawhidi. Uh, there's no way we can. They are unstoppable. No matter what you tell them, they will say, you pigs, you Rafidi, sick, Shias, uh, and uh, they will abuse us. Uh, they will. Uh, they've uh, got uh, people to get into our religion and harm us, even if it has to be on the spiritual level. Uh, kill them, assault them, rape them, uh, psychically do everything possible to harm the Shia Muslims. If I show them what is in Sahih Bukhari, uh, they will uh, start to tell me, why are you vilifying you Shias? They will start blaming us Shias. They have gotten into Pakistan in uh, a Shia a disguise as Shias. And uh, they're doing everything possible. So no, 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 you can't argue with these people. You can't have a discussion. Uh, <coughs> you can't sit and say, look, please, uh, this is in your side. This is wrong. If uh, it was like this, then long time ago, uh, many, many years ago, a Shia could have opened Sai Bukhari and told them <laughs> that uh, this is, uh, excuse me, uh, this is ridiculous against the Prophet of Islam. Uh, and so they, you expect them to say, yes, yes, uh, you know, we have these ridiculous hadiths uh, that Aisha really, yes, Aisha has uh, really given uh, Rasulullah such a bad time and look at her hadiths, they are ridiculous. They want to uh, badnam, make uh, Prophet Muhammad seem uh, look bad and herself like, now she says that I was playing with toys or I was uh, uh, playing with toys with my dolls when they called me and like that, you know, uh, uh, like I was such a child and that Prophet Muhammad, uh, so that people can say that, oh, Prophet Muhammad was a pedophilic, uh, marrying a child at age of 54. So uh, if who am I to show them right now? <laughs> They've been, uh, haven't they seen this, this Sahih Bukhari has been there for ages, ages. 
they don't give uh, way to reason they just come after us and we won't even know what hit us which missile hit us uh, which uh, what shaitan hit us or have we gone mad ourselves or we hit ourselves yeah like saima peer said that you are entertaining evil uh, yes you've kept yourself in a corner uh, i just wanted to uh, you know wake you up and uh, uh, this is all they will say and uh, get off scot free okay and enjoy the benefits get married to an arab and everything great for them they will protect their umar al khatab like anything no 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 it was a mistake i've told them again and again that in our history your history is terrible where did the uh, umar come and burn uh, hazrat fatima zahra salam allah alayha's house crush her between the door she um uh, this thing uh mahsan miscarried mahsan he injured her then we have uh, dr tahir al qadri coming in saying that uh, the way the shia muslims believe no 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 umar didn't uh, hurt uh, hazrat fatima zahra salam alayha because this narration uh, these narrators were liars so um, we come to sai bukhari then here it is i'm going to check sai bukhari uh, the calamity of thursday and when did they leave the funeral of prophet muhammad so i mean we look at everything but these people they will not allow us many of our alims ulama are silent on this because they will they have already come in they want to just destroy damage the shia muslims for political reasons for power and for saying that we are right and you are wrong you shia muslims are wrong and then i have stopped because if i go into sai bukhari and give you the calamity of thursday god knows what other uh, excuse they will make so again and again i'm telling you even on surah tahrim the wives of the prophet okay they gave the prophet a bit of a problem they deceived him they got a warning even though your hearts are inclined to go against prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam it's okay uh so what's happening here that uh, the quran okay now i i've known these people they say take it from the quran then they know at least this much to take things from the quran the hadith uh, to compare it with the quran so they will tell you that who are we to judge them whatever they have done now let it be and let us kill shia muslims or let us say that shia muslims are kafirs we don't say anyone is bad you people are the ones are the bad ones you people are infidels you people are kafir you shia muslims are shirk policies you shia muslims are liars you've taken you have lied this is what dr tahir al qadri was saying take surah abasa they say that the prophet the person is not named there but they have put there the prophet frowned the prophet did not frown he was infallible he did not frown there's another surah that says he does not speak out of his own a uh, desire it's god inspired revelation and then in surah abbas if you go move down it says that man is accursed so they would say that the blind man is accursed 
because he went and he disrupted and uh, disturbed Prophet Muhammad. It doesn't make sense. However, thank God I just found this on Surah Tahrim in the Quran, uh, the Surah, that uh, and this article that all Shia and Sunni exegetes are unanimous in maintaining that Hafsa and Aisha, the daughters of Umar and Abu Bakr, respectively, are hereby intended. So I don't know, there's a whole lot of things here. I think the uh, Sunnis, uh, I mean, those who believe in Aisha being the beloved of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi uh, they forgave. He was, she was forgiven, so was Hafsa forgiven. And only the hypocrites, who were the hypocrites, started to put more fire into this. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> yes, but also like consider uh, the verse, raise not your voices above the voice of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sorry. So they say that uh, the Prophet had forgiven. It was Abu Bakr and Umar. It was stated that this ayah was revealed about Abu Bakr and Umar. Al-Bukhari recorded that Ibn Abi Mulaika said. And so thus it goes on like this. So, Anyhow, a prophet was very generous. And uh, what has happened now? What was the excuse? That the prophet uh, forgave uh, Abu Bakr and Umar. It's okay to raise a voice and then to realize, no, we have done something wrong here. Yes, so it says here, Omar rea realized his mistake and started to speak so low, in a, such a low voice with the Prophet Muhammad, that uh, Prophet Muhammad, sorry, I shouldn't do, uh, said, uh, said that uh, something, oh my God. Sorry, uh, but they don't look at the calamity of Thursday. Now we go, we Shias, mashallah, we go back. Now this happened before the calamity of Thursday because uh, the Prophet Muhammad's uh, health was, uh, mashallah, he was well. Then what happened? They started uh, arguing amongst themselves raising their voices in, uh, on the calamity of Thursday, event, incident, tragedy actually. Okay, this calamity of Thursday, on Thursday, is uh, recorded in Al-Bukhari. And it's even mentioned that it was Umar. Umar said, the Prophet is under the influence of pain and you have with you the Quran. So the book of Allah suffices us. The Prophet wanted pen and paper to write something. Peace be upon him and his progeny. So, my God, Umar said against the Prophet, the Prophet's uh, desire. Uh, it wasn't the Prophet's desire, it was God who wanted him to write something because he doesn't uh, speak out of his own desire it's in the Quran and there's a Quran verse uh, that uh, whatever the messenger hands over to you take it and whatever he forbids you therefrom obey him uh, Quran Surah 59 verse 7 I am on this uh, blog spot uh, on the calamity of Thursday, Umar ibn al-Khattab. And uh, there are many things written here. The whole detail is given. The first person to say that the Prophet was in pain or 
has gone delirious which is uh, probably recorded by I can't say uh, but uh, delirious the word uh, ah yes in uh, Sahi Muslim it is, uh, the word delirious is used and Umar's name is not given here but it says that uh, some people said the messenger of Allah is delirious and then the Shia Muslims they do the research full taking the uh, narrations from Sahih Muslim, Bukhari and other to find out everything they read everything and uh, do not make any excuses first they read every hadith written on this the calamity of Thursday and who was the first one who said that uh, the Prophet is in pain and then the rest of the people followed him so the first person was Umar Umar al-Khattab and that's how and they make no excuses when it comes to the Prophet Muhammad and the people who obstructed him he's imagined the Prophet is in on his death bed he wants to write a will and he's been obstructed by these people some of his sahabas okay everyone uh, near him with him is a sahaba whoever has seen him has proclaimed that uh, they are Muslims is uh, at, at the time of the Prophet being alive and now he's dying can you imagine and they have found excuses <laughs> excuses against Umar al-Khattab no no we don't we don't hurt anyone our hearts tremble that you Shia Muslims have vilified so much Aisha Umar al-Khattab Abu Bakr you know like this they go on the messenger of Allah he's on his deathbed bed in pain here in pain okay I could seem <laughs> I could use the same tone of voice getting angry I'm so are you please see this the messenger of Allah is in pain Umar is saying no he is in pain don't give him the pen and paper to write the Quran is enough for us hmm. I can't carry on I'm so shocked I've read this again now no no we love we adore we revere uh, our Shia Muslims Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, if uh, we can take our lives but we're not going to uh, say that uh, make excuses for Umar al-Khattab he has called the Prophet uh, a delirious uh, hallucinating doesn't know what he's saying the Prophet doesn't know what he's saying in pain he's on his deathbed in pain and you're telling us Shia Muslims to take this matter very lightly it's nothing Umar al-Khattab what are you saying against the Sahaba what is the Sahaba saying against the Prophet Muhammad <laughs> 